Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by an antigen and an antibody. You should then be able to describe the structure of antibodies. And finally, you should be able to describe the roles of antibodies in the specific immune system. In this video, we're going to start looking at the specific immune system. The specific immune system includes antibodies, as well as lymphocytes such as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The specific immune system responds to each pathogen in an individual way. And once the specific immune system has defended against a pathogen, it will then produce a more effective response if it encounters the same pathogen again. So a key feature of the specific immune system is that it can recognize individual pathogens. Now, the surface of all cells are covered with molecules such as proteins and polysaccharides. And these molecules often carry out normal cellular functions. Scientists refer to these molecules as antigens. Now, the immune system can detect antigens on the surface of pathogens. The immune system can see these antigens as foreign or non self, and this leads to an immune response. During an immune response, antibodies will be produced which specifically bind to the antigen. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that antigens on the surface of your body cells do not trigger an immune response. That's because your immune system identifies these antigens as self, in other words, a normal part of your body. And your immune system does not produce antibodies against self antigens. OK, I'm showing you here the general structure of an antibody molecule. Antibodies are also referred to as immunoglobulins. Now, I should point out that there are several different classes of antibodies. The one I'm showing here is called immunoglobulin G, or IgG. And this is the one that you need to know. Antibodies are glycoproteins consisting of four polypeptide chains. We have two long heavy chains, which are identical to each other. And we have two shorter light chains, which are also identical to each other. The chains are held to each other by disulfide bridges, which I'm showing as black lines. There are two antigen binding sites, which we can see here. This means that one antibody molecule binds to two identical antigen molecules like this. When antigens bind, we call this an antigen antibody complex. Now, the tertiary structure of the antigen binding site is complementary to the structure of the antigen. In other words, the antigen fits perfectly into the antigen binding site. And this means that antibodies are highly specific for the antigen they bind to. The hinge region is flexible, allowing the distance between the two antigen binding sites to vary. Now, antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes, and the role of antibodies in our immune system is referred to as humoral immunity. We'll be looking at humoral immunity in detail in the next video. I'm showing you here the antibodies from two different B lymphocytes. As you can see, both antibodies have a region which is the same. This is called the constant region, and I'm showing the constant region as orange and red. The constant region has the same structure for every antibody, no matter which B lymphocyte produced it. However, the ends of the antibody molecules are different. These are called the variable regions, and these are around 110 amino acids long on each chain. The variable regions form the antigen binding sites. Now, the shape of the variable regions are different for the antibodies produced by different B lymphocytes. So, this means that the antibodies produced by different B lymphocytes will bind to different antigens. The human body contains millions of different B lymphocytes, so there are millions of different antibodies targeting a vast range of antigens. Antibodies have four main functions in the human body. Antibodies act as opsonins tagging foreign bodies for phagocytosis. And we looked at phagocytosis in the last video. Antibodies can stick pathogens together, preventing them from spreading around the body. And scientists call this agglutination. By sticking to pathogens such as viruses, antibodies prevent them from invading host cells. And lastly, 
Antibodies can stick to bacterial toxins, preventing the toxins from harming body cells. And scientists call these antibodies antitoxins. In the next video, we look at how antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes.